Hi again. I hope you're all staying home and keeping well and doing what you're supposed to be doing in this ridiculous time. In my last video, um, I talked about a person who calls himself Jesus. And I demonstrated how he tried to use the Wayback Machine um, and his efforts were pretty much tragically stupid. And I demonstrated how if he used the same methods uh, to investigate, and I use quotes there, his friends Angela Power Disney and Andy Devine, the results would be quite incriminating. Of course, we know, for if, you, if you watched the last video, we know that those results were not incriminating because uh, we went through exactly what it is that makes the Wayback Machine a very, very poor um, excuse for a search engine. Um, and Jesus went a little bit mental and was screaming about how, you know, I didn't understand that he was using Onion and Tor and all sorts of other exciting things. It doesn't matter. The Wayback Machine is a crappy search engine. Period. The end. End of. Okay? Bye now. Um, so today, I thought we would open with some words from another Jesus, one that you might have heard of. Um, if you'd all turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 24, and I'll just read to you. Hang on, I get, let me get my clipboard here. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds beat and blew against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine, and does not put them into practice, is like a foolish man, who built his house on sand. The rain came down, and the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell down with a great crash. Yeah, kaboom. And I think we can all see how this might apply to the current person referring to himself as Jesus. So today we're going to look at another one of G Coke Jesus's magic constructions, and you can pretty much bet that, like his previous one, it's built on a foundation of sand. Here's why. So this time we're looking at Company's House. Company's House is a place where people go to register any business that they might want to start in the UK. It's, it's legal. You have to do that. It's a legal requirement of running a business. This time we're going to look at a business venture called Lighthouse Media. Now, I think Jesus got the idea for this from a person on Twitter who goes by the name Dame Allen something or another. I can never remember his name. Um, and he basically said, oh, it's such a coincidence that um, there was a thing named Lighthouse Media that belonged to the Hampstead Dad, and then there was a, this other thing called Lighthouse Media, and that belonged, to, that was the studio, or Lighthouse something or other, and that was the studio where um, David Hockney, the artist, worked, and isn't that a terrible coincidence, and woo, 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 woo. Just for reference, there are 1,009 companies registered to company house with the name lighthouse one thing or another lighthouse ministries lighthouse um, media lighthouse this that and the other you name it there's a lighthouse for it so it's not really that much of a coincidence but that didn't deter our jesus one little bit did it because he's really really big into coincidences and if you point him in a direction he's going to go off um, like, a, you know, my little dog can, you know, jump up and beg for cookies, and that's pretty much what Jesus does. So let's take a quick, a close look at the Company's House website, where we find that Lighthouse Media was incorporated in February of 2008. Now, the timing here is very interesting and important. We know from the fact-finding hearing in 2015 that the Hampstead children's parents met in 2003. They quickly got to work having children, and by 2006, their relationship had disintegrated. And in 2008, Ella started uh, legal proceedings against the dad. That's all known fact, and I don't think Ella would dispute this. So if we go back to Lighthouse Media's Articles of Incorporation, um, which are available at Company's House, and I'll put up the put up the link here. But I'll also I'm also going to show do a bit of show and tell for you. 
but which Jesus somehow forgot to mention, uh, we see that as of February 2008, Ella is listed as the sole director. In What that means is that she owns all 1,000 pounds worth of the company's shares. Now, every company has to have a certain amount of um, shares that are you know, basically put out as part of the, co the company's registration. And basically one person, one or many pers people can own part shares in the company. Ella owned all of the shares in this company. The dad was listed as secretary. And of course, that was not the kind of secretary who makes appointments, um, types up letters and, and makes your coffee for you. The company secretary, uh, and I'm reading here, is the person who is responsible for making sure that a company complies with various legal requirements, keeping track of shareholder meetings, and making reports to company's house, among other things. So it's a bit of a different concept. You have, sort of have to wrap your mind around company's house speak when you, when you look at this stuff. Um, so we must assume that as of February 28th, while the couple was split up, they were still on good enough terms that Ella was able to ask uh, her ex-partner to serve as secretary in her new company. So at that point, you think, well, maybe they weren't getting along, but they wanted to do this business thing, and maybe it just seemed like a good idea at the time. Okay, fair enough. You know, that happens. Couples can decide that they're not meant for each other, but that they don't hate each other enough to exclude one another from their lives. It happens, you know? Sometimes people do that. Now, let's get another thing out of the way while we're at it. Um, Jesus and Angela get very, very, very excited at the company's address. It's listed as being at 47 Hollycroft in North London, fairly close to Hampstead, which, you know, was where the children were going to school. So here's the thing about that address. One of the children mentions it in the videos that Abraham and Ellen forced them to make in 2014. They're talking about their social worker, Richie, and Ella says, the one that came to our home. And then they mention a Polish lady named Ella, who is apparently also either a social worker or someone involved with Kafkas, um, who also came to see them. And the little girl says, yes, she came to our house in 47, 47 Hollycroft Avenue. That's where Ella lived. It was not the father's house. It was Ella's house. The father's house is listed actually on the company's house site and he lived a couple of blocks away which of course was mentioned in the um, in the high court um, finding. If you look at the overview page on company's house you'll see that it lists accounts overdue and annual returns overdue. Now these don't necessarily mean the same thing that they would mean if if you were um, looking at accounts payable, for example, and saying this person's account is overdue, they owe us money. What the, what that means on company's house is nothing sinister. Um, I'm very sorry, Angela and Jesus. It's it really isn't. The reality is, every year, and every incorporated company has to submit a summary of their annual accounts and as well as a report on their business, and they have to submit that to Company's House, and there are deadlines and ways to do it, and you have to like follow certain guidelines and that sort of thing. So it looks as if Lighthouse Media managed to uh, turn in one company report in 2009, um, but after, th after that, crickets, nothing. So in April 2009, we see that Lighthouse Media has applied for something called a debenture, now, a debenture is basically a medium to long-term long loan, and it's held by a lending institution, bank, whatever, um, against the company's assets. Since all of the company's assets were held, as we know, by Ella, um, she was the one who applied for the debenture. And sure enough, um, if you are looking for confirmation of that, you will see Ella's signature at the bottom of the application. Now, how do we know that it's Ella's signature? It just looks like a little scribble to, if, you, if you're not familiar with it. Um, I will explain that to you in just one moment, so just hang in there. We'll, be right, you know, we'll, we'll get to that, okay? So by April 2010, Companies House is getting a little bit ticked off at Lighthouse Media because they haven't been making their annual reports. The company is put on notice 
for compulsory strike off. So what that means is you have not been complying with the um, rules and regulations that we set forth as a company for you to follow. Um, you haven't been doing that and you've been very bad and so we're going to strike you off because you do not deserve to be a company because you're obviously not serious about this. That's basically what it means. So as of July 2010, the company is officially dissolved. This makes sense as the director and the secretary weren't exactly on speaking terms at that point. And I would suspect that looking after the company probably was not their first priority in life. Um, at that point, they were doing a whole bunch of other things, including going to court against each other quite often. But wait, is this really the end for Lighthouse Media? Ho, ho, ho. No, it is not. So, on 23rd of December, or sorry, November, rather, 2012, Ella Draper applies to have the company restored to the company's house registry. This application is approved by the High Court in May 2013. So why did Ella do this? Well, it looks as though the company was owed a VAT re refund by HMRC. And th the purpose of resuscitating Lighthouse Media is simply to recover that money. After which Ella promises that she will shut the company down voluntarily. So that's fair enough, right? Like, you know, if you, if a, if your company shut down was shut down on you know for you without without your permission, although probably because of stuff that you neglected to do, and there's still some money in it, you kind of want to squeeze that last little little bit of money out, right? You know, um, if it's a VAT refund, whatever it happens to be, you want that back. So now remember that I said that I was going to show you how we knew that it was Ella who signed for the debenture. Um, well, that's here's how we know that this is the case. In the application to restore the company to Company's House, Ella had to sign the judgment, and here's her signature with her name around, above it. And here's the signature on the application for the debenture. So it's very clear that shortly after the company was up and running, it was all Ella's show. She held all the shares, she applied for a loan against the company's assets, and when she realized that she could get a bit of VAT money back, she had the company restored and took the money out. Um, shortly afterwards, she applied to change the company name from Lighthouse Media Group to Lighthouse Media, uh, cl open quote, London, close quotes, and that resolution went through on the 3rd of January, 2013. Um, one part of the company's house listing that made Jesus and Angela just go completely apeshit um, was that there were charges listed. Now, as I mentioned before, charges don't necessarily mean the same thing when we're talking. It's not like a police charge or a you know um, legal charge against a person. Um, unfortunately for Angela and Jesus, these charges pertain to that pesky debenture. Remember the long-term loan that Ella took out? Well, apparently uh, the bank wanted her to pay it out, and she didn't do that. Naughty, naughty Ella. So, hands up, everyone who's shocked by this one. Yep, I know, me too. Ooh, boy, it took me really by surprise. Um, anyway, that's basically it. That's all I wanted to say about the company's house business, but I wanted to say that if there's any possible way to misread things and misinterpret things and fail to grasp the basics of simple business subjects, because believe me, I have very little um, experience in any kind of running of businesses, but I do know what some of the terms mean, and when I don't, I go and look them up. That's a tip for you guys. So as the real Jesus said, uh, that is what happens when you build your house on sand. Strong wind comes along and down it goes. Okay, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you later. Bye now.